I am your singing telegram. Hi, and welcome to the Home Podcast, episode 12. I'm Tim Abbott. With me is Brett Phillips, hey. a.k.a. Bert, and Chris Mason. Hello, hello, hello. And uh, stand in for Andrew is a gigantic pink dog. Thank you, Brett. Uh, this is episode 12. I actually said that correct this time, and like last time I said episode... I thought it was 8. No, we, I said episode 7 last time, <laughs> and uh didn't realize that until I looked at the audio. Definitely had Star Wars on the brain. This is our one year anniversary. Y'all. One year we started doing this. It's your birthday. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about nine months longer than I thought we'd last. Mm-hmm. So, um, in this birthday episode, we are going to talk about Lego Dimensions and my now obsession with that. Uh, the Division Beta, Fallout Four, because Chris has more to tell us about it. Uh, some Destiny that he'd like to tell us about. And then we're going to use a suggestion from the audience of a difficult game beaten slash achievement earned. And then Chris is going to tell us a story. Because I couldn't think of any... Like, Stay tuned, kids. I couldn't think of anything like super fun to talk about like I normally do. Like for like I, episode 12, I ran out of ideas. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, it's like, oh crap, we made it a year, now what? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, so first, Lego Dimensions. Do you know what Lego Dimensions is? I know what Legos are, and so, I know what Dimensions are. Let me let me ask, is it okay. is it basically like Skylanders with a portal, except you make different things with the Legos, and it actually will import what you make into the game? Correct. Um, um, doesn't, like, obviously, like, you couldn't just make some random goofy thing, and mm-hmm. then it puts it in there, like it... Um, so basically what it is, is like Skylanders and stuff, there's a portal, or what they call a portal, it's a little pad that you plug in kind mm-hmm. of thing, and um, you basically, the directions have you actually build the portal and everything that you do in the game, but it comes with Batman, uh, Gandalf, Wildstyle from Lego Movie, mm-hmm. and a Batmobile. Um, is it awesome? It's actually really fun. Is everything awesome? Everything well, is awesome. Okay. Everything sure. is cool when you're part of a team. This is my jam <laughs> um so basically it's you will uh it's basically just another lego game but where you build your legos that it gives you so um and the directions are actually show up on screen and it's like a page from the book so it'd be like find these pieces and you put the pieces together hit a and it flips the page and then it does the you follow huh. through the directions and you first thing you build is the portal and then has you build like the batmobile and then as you um, buy extra characters or extra level packs... I'm Batman. It does the... <laughs> there was um, it's actually one part, like, because Batman jumps through the portal first. And then, so he ends up in, like, Lego, the movie. And Metal Beard is stolen. And uh, Batman runs into the Batman from Lego movie. And he's like, I'm Batman. And the other one goes, no, I'm Batman. And they go back and forth. It's really funny. <laughs> that would be funny. Um... So you uh, basically put your characters and stuff, but you put them on the pad, and it puts the person in the game that's on the pad. And um, so certain things, and then they have like fun packs that you can buy that'll be like a different character. I know there's like um, Back to the Future, Scooby Doo. There's um, Lego Dimension. They have um, level packs. So like a Back to the Future one, which I recently did. So you build a little Marty McFly, you put him on there, and then you jump into the Back to the Future's world. And you go through, like, the first movie, basically what it plays as. And you build the hoverboard, and you build a DeLorean. And you use those throughout the, the level and stuff along the lines. But there's also fun packs, like there's a um, Scooby-Doo one. So you have Scooby and Shaggy, and Scooby can be used to, like, Ruh-ruh sniff raggy. and... Um, Zoinks. So Scooby can be used to, like, do the sniffing and tracking Ruh-ruh. and stuff. Um you know, Shaggy has his own things and stuff because they have different things. Like to be able to destroy a silver box, you need this type of character. Mm-hmm. You to use water type thing, you need to have this type of character to. So it sounds like Skylanders and Disney Infinity kind of combined. Yeah, kind of idea. You know, with um, Legos. but add the Lego to, like mm-hmm. idea behind it and stuff. So I may have gotten a little obsessed about it, and I may have. I bought like four level packs. Okay, I know how much they cost. That's... Yeah. Yeah. And then I have like six other like <laughs> oh, gosh. character packs too that came in. Yeah. Let me guess, Amazon? Actually, Best Buy. 
Mm. Best Buy had them on sale last week for like seven forty nine when they're normally like fifteen bucks. The character packs and mm-hmm. stuff. And then I have my twenty percent off that I got for that gamer club unlock thing, and it actually applies to those. So I was getting for like six dollars. That's so. not bad. Um, but it's actually it's it's surprisingly fun. Like, and it's really clever how they do certain missions. Like it'll be like um, there was one mission where I was fighting like a uh, Lex Luthor, and um, I had like on his back was like the design of the portal, but it might be um, blue and yellow. So you have to go through the different characters with, like, say, Batman. You had to run him through, like, Blue, and you had to have him step... You had to move the character on the pad itself to, like, make that one blue, make this one blue, and then have another character run through the yellow and then put that one in the middle to be the yellow portal part. So they actually have you move the character around on the pad and stuff. So I thought that was actually really, like, it's a clever way of interacting your characters instead Mm -hmm. of just having them sit there and not do anything. Like, you actually have to move them around and stuff on those lines, so... It's clever. It's cool. It's something fun and different. It's the only thing I play in my living room, so because I don't have room for that in my office to play on it. But I think it's cool. I'm enjoying it. It's just became my new. Do you like Cassie play? Now she, I, I'm scared she's going to knock my chocolate chips in a sugar cookie factory. (laughs) Uh, Next thing I played, uh, I did the division beta. So yeah, and what do you want to know about the division? So how does the gameplay feel? And I know I'm making the comparison with Destiny a lot, but that's why it, it kind of looks like a modern version, like this year's kind of version. And I don't mean it's a carbon copy. I just mean if there's anything to compare it to, it looks like it would be compared to Destiny. Um, Destiny is a good comparison as far as basically like it starts you're in the post-apocalyptic. You know, something happened in New York mm-hmm. and you're part of the divisions like to help clean up the city and stuff like that. It's third person instead of first. Um, all the way through, so there's no first person shooter. But I've heard it's like third person, like Army of Two, third person, where it's like like right over your shoulder, and then when you zoom in, it like does like a close up over your shoulder. No, nah, it doesn't do anything yeah. like that. No. I mean, some little bit kind of thing, but I mean, it's still it's still mainly third person. But it's also it's more third person cover shooter. Like they want you to be in cover, like Army of Two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but it's, they have some. I like some of the mechanics they did, like. If you're standing behind a wall and you need to go like to behind the truck, it'll have that highlighted as A. If you hold down A, your character will come out of cover and run over to the truck. Kind of like, like Gears of War. Yeah, Gears that's, of War. Yeah. Well, Gears having, of War doesn't go. You have to like, run across areas. Yeah. Having a designation, that sounds nice because that was always a trouble with I was having with cover games was it never went where I thought it was going to go when I hit the whatever mm-hmm. the directional pad in A. He would pop up and run instead of hopping over to where I wanted him to go. Right, yeah. It does a nice job of showing like this is where you're going to run. And you just have, it didn't tell you, like, hold down the button to make the move. Mm. I eventually figured that out. Um, the beta was still relatively short. Um, it was basically one main mission, and there was, like, six side missions. What was that um, main mission? Uh, the main mission was you had to run through Madison Square Garden mm-hmm. and fight your way to the roof and take out a bad, bad guy thing and basically rescue a nurse that you then use to upgrade your medical area inside your base. So the whole game starts like you get into your base, taking out the bad guys that are trying to attack it, and then in there is tech stuff, uh, army stuff, and then medical stuff. And then you, the missions and stuff that you do go towards upgrading your medical wing that then, you know, having the upgrades for your medical wing will then let you have, like, upgrade perks for your character. Um, like, I had a... I unlocked, like, a ping... Thing was like one of my first things I did, so I could ping like a map, and then it would mark people, enemies in the area if it pinged it. Kind of like a sonar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I unlocked a like health thing, so I could like shoot a shoot you with like a health gun from across the map, and it would hit, and like the green dots spread out, and then suck into you to give you health. That's kind of cool. So it's like it was a cool like nice like that was one of the things you could do. There was also like a grenade thing you could shoot, and it would stick and then blow up. Um, I guess I'm kind of excited. I didn't even play the beta, but I'm actually considering it because. You know, Destiny's getting a bit old, and I like the mentality behind it. So, like, the Destinies, that co-op kind of thing. It sounds like it's going to be a very much it's, co-op kind of game. Like, there's it, going to be things you can do by yourself, but to get can, the best of it, you're going to need to play co-op. You can do it solo. And uh, I was actually in the Alpha in December, but that had a, apparently a really strict NDA, non-disclosure agreement. That's why I didn't talk about it last month. Um, so, and I played that one. The only thing I remember was, like, I did that one mission for Madison Square Garden and that, 
I did it by myself. It was really freaking difficult. Mm. When I did it with two of my buddies, the mission was a lot easier. I mean, that game is meant to be played as a group kind of thing. But like you can go through it, but you it's, can, it's but designed more for... It's meant to be played with a party. Yeah. Um, it's still... There's still a lot to do. Um, and That's the, the purpose beta, of the beta. Right. The beta just kind of like showed like one mission, showed like a couple side quest things, how you can do it. You're like running around the map a lot, which I'm hoping there's going to be more along the way because right was we were running from like one area that we did to like and we'd finish it really quick like a side mission or something like that and then we'd have to run to like the other thing and you're just booking it through the streets of new york and it's like supposedly almost a one-to-one scale of new york and we're only this like one tiny section of it Mm -hmm. but it's like we were running the entire way so i hope there's gonna be uh so I'm hoping there's going to be like maybe more on the way to entice you to keep going, more bad guys along the way for you to fight or something along those lines. Like an a- like you be running and all of a sudden you get ambushed, right? Stuff like that. Like that'd be cool. To add the enemy little, has moved against you. Yeah. <laughs> to add yeah. something a little extra to as you're going along because it was one of those things where I was like, "Geez, this is taking forever for us." At least us you can to... take a cab or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's still it would be nice if like there's all these bicycles in the like <laughs> sitting there kind of thing. It's like, why would my guy not grab a bike right now and pedal? <laughs> four blocks down the street. Not four blocks down the street and then abandon the bike, you know? Um, so there's little things like that. It was kind of like, it'd be interesting to see, but I, from what the beta showed of like the six time stuff, then you see like the map from like the real game and it mm-hmm. it goes... Um, hey, Agent M. Never mind. Um, okay, never mind. <laughs> nice save. Cat is trying to, to get... <laughs> Cat's trying to get in a cupboard back there. It's actually pretty awesome. Camera. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. <laughs> We're watching you. He's like, Sidetracked by the cat. Yes. Um, Carry on. We went into the dark zone, and uh, that's where that's the multiplayer part of it, where you can actually shoot other people and stuff along those lines and everything. Because before, I was like, you might see people in your world, kind of, but they're more at like, the hub bases. Mm-hmm. And... Um, but they wouldn't be like out in the world, world, and they. Um, but you couldn't interact with them or anything like that. Whereas the dark zone is where you go and you can shoot anybody, fight mm-hmm. anybody, and stuff along those lines. And it was interesting because we we like I don't I don't understand the point of the dark zone yet. Besides, like trying to get gear or something along those lines. Like, I don't know if there's going to be missions that are involved with the dark zone that you need to do. Because, like, we went in there and it was literally like, we don't know where to run to, we don't know where to go. Because there's no markers, nothing like saying, "Hey, go here." We just happened to be like see some people calling some stuff in, so we're like, eh, "Let's shoot them." And it's kind of what it basically ended up, anyways, was that like you you were going to get shot by somebody that saw you because they they were like, "I don't know what's going on," so I'm just going to shoot everybody. I wonder so. if it's going to be like the best stuff. You can't like call like a care package or something like that in unless you're in a dark zone. But in order to care, you know, to do that, of course, you're going to have to take a chance. So, of course, you wouldn't yeah. want to do that by yourself. You want to go in with a group because there there are like the better gear and stuff supposed to be in there, and you have to like you know you have to call it out because it has to be decontaminated for you to get to you. Mm-hmm. Well, going based on the um, that trailer video that you showed us a while back. Uh, they were doing a mission inside the dark zone. Yeah, something took them in there. Yeah, they and... they like uh, according to that video, they were doing a mission inside the dark zone. Yeah, it's just and, I don't. I'm guessing yeah. for the beta, they didn't have anything like it was just literally this scenario to run around and make sure yeah. that mm-hmm. like I connected sandbox. with you know like the interaction works and stuff. Like interaction that, with yeah. stuff. Like, yeah, I'm sure there's stuff along the way. Cause there was like AI enemies that in there that you could shoot, but you had to like. It didn't really show you or tell you kind of thing. You're just kind of like, oh, hey, look, here's some random people. And then it did glitch one time because I was running around behind, like, uh, my buddies and stuff like that. But on their screen, I was, like, down in the subway. So, <laughs> um, but overall, I think it's a, it's, I think it's going to be pretty cool. I'm excited to play it. Like, once we get, once it comes out and we get it with a group and stuff along those lines, I think it's pretty neat. So, um. So after that, Chris, you want you want to tell us about Fallout? Uh, you no, know, I'm still playing Fallout. I'm still enjoying it. I'm roughly seventy some hours into it right now. I think and you I, just said you just got to the. I glowing just sea got mission. to the glowing sea. I think I got there in fifteen hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, like Agent M and I were talking about, I've done quite a few extra missions because 
uh, found out there's, you know, four or five randomly generated missions that don't ever stop, which are, you know, go get this piece of tech or go clear out this area, go help out this settlement, which I just, a lot of them were really easy to do because once you've gone through an area, you've gotten all the keys, you've gotten the passcodes. So like the initial setup of an area, you go into a hospital or something at the end of the, the very beginning, there's a door that you can't get in, which has got what you need because you need a key or a password. Well, the key or password's at the far end of the level. <laughs> of course. So you got to fight your way through, get it, and then you randomly end up right there back at it, and you get it. But you don't lose that stuff. So later on, it'll be clear the ghouls out of the hospital, well, I've already, or get a piece of gear out of the hospital. Well, I've already got the key, so I can just go from point A to point B instead of having to go all throughout the hospital. I've done that several times, and then, you know, they're kind, they're not getting generic, but they kind of are. I'm seeing the same verbiage, I'm seeing the same pattern, but you're still getting the same amount of experience. So, not to mention the gear, not to mention all the, you know, like I said, the, the experience for actually killing the enemies. So, I've done quite a bit more of that than I probably should have, but the story <laughs> missions, you know, I'm doing a few more of the story missions. I got to the glowing sea, and I'm like, I'm going to pause here for a minute and make sure I've got my power armor, plenty of fusion cores before I go into that. Yeah. Yeah, make sure you do, or you're going to walk like a slug. Yeah, well, the fun part about that is I upgraded uh, my my carrying ability, so now I can run if I'm over-encumbered by using uh, AP points, and then I can also fast travel when I'm over-encumbered. Oh, nice. So that, I didn't think that was actually going to be worth doing. I was very mistaken, <laughs> because there's been a lot of areas where I'm like, okay, I can just make it to the door and get out to the, you know, main area, I can fast travel back to, you know, sanctuary or wherever and get rid of my stuff. So instead of having to make three trips, I'll over encumber by like 500. I'll just get every <laughs> single thing I possibly can. And then just once I get to the door, yes, I'm slow going, but I can still use AP points and run for a short distance. So it doesn't take nearly as long. And then like I said, once I get to the door and I'm out in Commonwealth or wherever, I can fast travel, boom, done. So it's actually becoming a lot more... Uh, useful than I actually thought, but I still like. You know, Andrew was talking about before, right, Andrew? Yeah, exactly. Good job, Andrew. Um, you know, I wish there was somebody else to help me with the, the <laughs> Fallout talk here. Yeah, I, I haven't touched it. Yeah, there's a uh, a lot more to it still to go. I like to the story missions, and there there's a season pass for Fallout, so it makes me curious of what they're going to be bringing out because I think the world is so big and so much to it right now. It's just going to add even more. So, yeah, I'm still enjoying Fallout. It's going to be a little while before I, I finish it. Uh, how you got for me? Yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go on a rant or rave. It's really, it's really, I'm really enjoying. Nothing we haven't already said before. Right. It's the same. I mean, you're just continuing doing. Yeah, what just you're continuing. Doing it's just you know, like I said, this, the story missions, uh, the give me the side missions, the areas. I think Agent M and I were talking about. She's discovered a hundred. I've discovered over two hundred areas. Whew. So, and it makes, it makes it for easy, it make, when you discover those more areas, the more of those areas, it makes it easier because I can fast travel to something closer to the objectives. That's one reason I've done a lot of the, uh, the extra objectives over and over again because I found somewhere close to it. So it's not like I have to walk to it and it's going to take forever. I, z I literally just zap over, <laughs> done. Right. Because I found somewhere close to it. I have found it's nice because I have found a couple of enemies that I had not run before, run into before. I found an Alpha Deathclaw, that was fun. A Behemoth, <laughs> didn't know what that was until he showed up behind me. And that's the second drink I've now. Finished. Yes, I'm on number six. So okay, I um, I I do have to drive home tonight. You do have to drive home. <laughs> so yeah, you slow down, everybody. I, I, what was these? These are Karmas, but I'm going to call them Chris Karmas. Okay. Because I've, I've tweaked them a bit. Okay, well, whatever they are, they're fantastic. They're, they're tasty. They're good. <laughs> they are tasty. Um, Very tasty. So, I also figured I'd mention about uh, Black Ops real quick, because the... DLC's coming. DLC's coming. Uh, already, if you have a PS4, but... Yeah, wait, but we're not a PS4 people. No. Especially for shooters. I'm sorry, I can't, I, there's no way I'm going to a PlayStation controller for a shooter. I'm too ingrained on the Xbox. Think. I've done it, but it, cause I mean, I played like the Destiny beta and stuff, like when it first came out on Destiny on PlayStation first, like I've done it, but I'm used to on Xbox and all mm -hmm. my friends are on Xbox. So I'm, I'm just not going to play a shooter on Xbox, on PlayStation. Um, 
But there was a beta thing that uh, the a beta patch notes that they came out with a new patch also for the game. Um, so they've added some uh, little tweaks and stuff. I guess the one thing that I saw that they did was for the shotguns. They actually increased the damage range okay. for all of like all three shotguns. Wow. Why? Of the KRM-262... Okay, you solidify the fact that I will not be in multiplayer. A 205 Breachy and the Haymaker 12. Apparently, I didn't realize they did to the Breachy as well. I was going to say, because the Haymaker 12 was already killing me from, like, halfway across our the, room. The, the Breachy is the one that's, like, now is the one that's freaking ridiculous. Like, you just spam the heck out of that trigger, and it just blasts an area. And I'm, I was the one that was like, you know what? I, they want to camp inside the, as we were playing on uh, Stronghold. And I was like, okay, they want to they want to camp inside the um, house. Fine, I'm going to be that jerk that gets a shotgun, and I was destroying them. <laughs> <laughs> they kept running in there. I kept blasting them. It was funny. One guy knew I was coming, standing into the kitchen. I still jumped into the uh, window and shotgunned him in the head, and kept on rolling. It was fun, but uh, I don't. That was the one where I saw that. I was like, are you, r- really? Why? It, why would you increase the range? Like the ranges were fine or f- too far. Exactly. And now you've made them further. Like I don't or farther. Um, I like further. Yeah, it's just I think of the movie Finding Forrester when I think of further and farther. There's a scene in that movie. I, don't I like know. further rather than farther. Yeah. Have you seen that movie? No. It's a good movie. Sean Connery. There's a scene in there where he's like, Sir Sean Connery. No, sorry. Maybe there's a scene where he talks about further and farther that kind of comes up and stuff. It's actually really clever. All right, cat, stay away from the camera. I saw you eyeing it. Um, like my public. But the <laughs> there are uh, four new maps coming. So I do have we have the and a new zombie map and a new zombie map and we have the because our wonderful mini fridge also came with the season pass, so we're ready to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one of them is a remake of the ship. From Black Ops Two, the passenger, the passenger ship, uh, like the the yacht, the yacht, yeah, the yeah, that's the one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that one. That was a good map. So it's pretty I'm, good. It's cool that they're bringing it back. I do apologize. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Camera and audio. Mm, that was good. Ooh. Yeah, we gotta come up with a signal so I can just <laughs> mute you really quick. I have a mute button. <laughs> well, you got the the visual too. So when he goes. Yeah, the big yeah, so yeah. kind of, we kind of know what he's <laughs> Yeah, we know what he's doing. Um, but so on. far, that's pretty much all I've been doing. Is play, I play a lot of Black Ops. Yeah, so we know. So. I'll stick with uh, Hardcore and my Silence you know, Drake. Out of front instead of just ignoring us like the other night. I, I apologize to Agent M because I, I didn't realize I didn't. I, I did the whole, like, l- I came out of, like a nap kind of thing and like looked at my phone. I, I was like, oh, yeah, I, I might be able to make it. And I said it to myself, but I didn't type it. <laughs> and then I was like, two days later, I'm like, I never responded to that text message. <laughs> I feel like a jerk. And so, uh, sorry, Agent M. Uh, so, but I would like to be there. So, hi, and there you go. How was your experience with Battlefront? Hey, it's not as bad as, you know, I originally, you know, made it out to be. It's, I mean, it's exactly what we th- I thought it was going to be. There's that single player part's not there. Um, I tried it when I, fr- I got it for Christmas and I tried it for a few minutes. Put it up until Agent M got it, and then as we started going through it, it's it is like I said before, like it's one of those games that the fun factor increases exponentially once you have some folks that you can play with. Exactly. I mean, we just did like the survival modes were a lot more fun because you can split up and go two different directions, so the enemies will follow not just you. So now they're all following her. Now I can loop back around, recover, and I can come up behind them. So it just adds a different dynamic to it. And even we played, you know, through several of the game types, and um, you know, they're not just straight up deathmatch. They're all kind of fun. Yeah. Um. They some of them let you play with heroes. Some of them are actually let you basically they're all the um, the flying battles. So, yeah. um, it just adds a different dimension to it. It, was, it wasn't as it wasn't as what I was anticipating. So, it's still not what it used to be, like with Galactic Conquest mode and stuff like that. But if you do have a friend or a couple friends to play with. It's a lot more fun. Yeah, I've actually played it fairly recently, and um, there was a I, I had probably one of the worst multiplayer matches I've ever had in my entire multiplayer career, 
Because we were doing the um, Walker Assault. Well some, well, some of us are used to having yeah. that. Like, every other week, it's the worst match of our multiplayer the, um, career. But it was like, we're doing the Walker Assault, but it was the one on Endor. Mm-hmm. And Endor, as a stormtrooper, and you're trying to shoot the Rebels, it's almost impossible to they're, see they're camoed. somebody. And I did get an achievement where apparently I got hit in the head by a rock from an Ewok. That's kind of awesome. Didn't know that was a thing. But all of a sudden, like, my character did, like, the flinch... And then all of a sudden, the achievement popped up, and it said I got hit in the head by a rock from thrown by an Ewok on Endor. And I was like, <laughs> "Didn't know that was a thing." So. That's, that's pretty cool. Because <laughs> I've seen like the little Ewoks like pop out of the tree. Out of the we tree haven't, haven't played stuff. Endor yet. Endor is, as a rebel, it's a little bit easier to obviously see the white stormtroopers that are running around. But when you're camoed on the other side, like mm-hmm. you're playing as a stormtrooper, it's really hard to see. It was kind of. Nice. I went like seven and twenty-seven in that game. It was. It was rough. It was kind of nice to also, because a couple of the game modes let you actually play as the hero, like, cycle you through. So, even if you're playing the standard multiplayer mode and you don't hardly ever, you know, it's 40 people, you know, 20 v 20. So, the chances are you getting the hero icon, you know, kind of slim. Yeah, so it's all about when it pops up and finding it. Right, but you can also find it somewhere else. Like I said, we've played a, a smaller map and... It was a lot more, you, you're going to be the hero. Like, it's going to make it. So it was a lot more fun. It was kind of fun to play as the Emperor and as Luke and Vader and Boba Fett and stuff like that. So yeah, it added a different dimension to it. I liked it. It wasn't, wasn't nearly as bad. I'm still not a fan of their party system. What but, party system? I swear, yeah. I, I, you know, we tried for several times where it's just like, all right, just go. And maybe I can join you because it's like, hey, I want to be your partner. But then they don't bring you in the party. When yeah, you exit. One person has to start the match, and then you, you have, have the other person has it. to hit like Y, y yeah. like right when it pops up. Yeah, it's terrible. If you don't, then it they your spot so will be just, taken. You're, you're, you're just sitting there on the dashboard, waiting for thinking that you're waiting well, or waiting for somebody else to initiate, and then they're already in the match, and it yeah. And then you, they, yeah, yeah, and then the that. the spot in the corner, it's like it's small in the corner, mm-hmm. like it doesn't Very tell low. you like it it should be bigger, I mean, like it should. It, it should be a party system. Like the leader starts the match and it takes everybody with you. It's, it's Halo Two's been doing this. Like just copy Halo Two. If you can't find and figure out a party system, copy Halo Two. It's not hard. They've all done it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's it's still. I don't know why they came up with that. Who thought like that was the brilliant way to do it? But um, yeah. So next topic because we are flying through stuff. We're only at. 28 minutes. Yeah, I figured this one would be a little bit shorter. Episode. Yeah. It just didn't feel right without Andrew. Yeah. Got a good stand in, though. Yeah, we do. It definitely <laughs> smells better. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. You're going to get picked on. <laughs> um, yeah, even though I, I did pull an Andrew. Even though one. you did pull the Andrew. Yeah. But unlike Andrew, I at least you acknowledged. You actually responded. Well, and hey, and the, the, he grunted. That was a response. That's true. Yeah, and then yeah. hung up on you. <laughs> 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 and then refused to answer the phone for the next several hours. Because <laughs> he knew he had done it. <laughs> Pretty much. That was a really loud spike in the laugh there. But, um. That was funny. It was funny. Uh, Destiny. Oh, Destiny. I mean, we can't have a podcast without talking about Destiny. Yeah, it's the one year anniversary. We gotta talk about Destiny on it. Yeah, uh, Destiny's winding down, in my opinion, on a lot of different levels. Um, there's a new uh, update next week for Valentine's Day that looks interesting. Um, and I give props for that, but Destiny is, Bungie's running short of content, and that's the, the crux of it. The rumors, they have never announced, they have not officially announced Destiny 2 yet, and then they, Unofficial announcement of Destiny 2 got pushed back, which I'm not quite sure how you can unofficially push back a release date that's not been <laughs> announced, but apparently they have. So right now, the problem with Destiny and you know, Bungie is, you know, Bungie likes their secrets. Bungie's famous yeah. for their secrets. But the problem is they're losing a lot of people because they're being secretive. Because right now they've said there's no major content except for the Taken King. There was no more, no more Taken, like that kind of Taken King content, which the Taken King was amazing. They were just. I agree with that. Yeah, but if they're gonna just if they're gonna do holiday events and dear God Iron Banner, and (laughs) I'm sure they'll bring Sparrow Racing, which was a nice little little touch, but it's not enough for a year. I mean, if you could get me to June, okay, that'd be different. But when you're talking probably next year, sometimes for Destiny Two, there's no way they're going to keep half the people, and they've already lost so many. 
because there's just nothing. They haven't fixed the, you know, they're not adding uh, uh, matchmaking to the raid system. They're still making you pay for the Taken King on both systems, which, yep. like I said, I have it on the 360, and I would like to play on the one, but, you know, Bungie said, or that was more of Activision, said, oh, no, you have to pay for both, which is ridiculous, even though your character carries over. Yep. So I haven't, I actually have not been on Destiny for about a month now. I've been playing Fallout and other things, but, and I will pick it back up next week and check out the Valentine's Day thing, but, again, there's no... The Nightfalls are yielding the same exact rewards. There's just nothing left to do. I have three characters that have been maxed out. That's the problem is there's nothing left to do except for the raid. And the raid is six people. So if you don't have six people, you pretty much are shot. Yep. And so, Which half our group is on the 360 and half the other is half on the is one. on the one. So it's exactly if you, I don't know. That Bungie's on a downhill spiral at this moment for, with, for Destiny. I still have hope for Destiny 2, but again, I don't see anything going on with Destiny in as the next year. As long as they've taken what they've learned from Destiny 1 yes, and exactly. make it into what if they it's the only, what I'm, we were I'm hopeful. What I we am were built you know, Destiny what, what 2. We were hyped for on Destiny if they make Destiny 2, what we were hyped for on Destiny 1, you know. Well, look at they, what they did with the Taken King. Yeah. The Taken King is what vanilla Destiny should have been. Right. Correct. And, you know, and, and let's be honest about it. It should, and we don't. You know, we've gone over the story. You mm. know, be, beginnings of destiny, what happened, and mm-hmm. whatnot. So I'm just, I'm taking it all with a grain of salt. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is one of those things, though. At the end of the day, though, at least you I mean you got more than your money's worth at the end of the day. They, I have. They definitely. So it's, it's just, it's they've kind of hit, a, they've hit a wall, and you need to. You yeah. know, this is where most people are going to start moving on. Unless Which, you, I mean, unless the you, unless you are sucked into the multiplayer. We're an hour. That's going to keep you. Yeah, we're an hour and a half. We're a year and a half into the game. Yeah. So it's and it's still. What you're talking decently ten, popular. You, the so. problem is you're talking a ten year franchise is what they're trying for. And okay, you're not starting off on a great foot. With, oh yeah, they definitely didn't with the launch of it. And I mean, kind of, if you think about it, it's almost hurt them with how good the Taken King was because it's like, okay, if you could have done this now. Why didn't you do this before? Because it's a lot of common sense, like, hey, you know, the whole thing about every gun you have is no longer valid. You have to find it again, then you have to level it up from start again. I mean, who in their right mind thought that was a good idea when that was, Dark that, Below I mean, came out? Yeah, that, that drove me away. I was and, like, I'm not doing it anymore. And if there's a lot that they could do, and and, I get, and I, again, I'm not a developer. I don't know. I mean, I give Bungie all the credit in the world. Yeah, they're I, a great company. They are a great company. I take nothing away from them, but... Like, when they made The Dark Below and they made The House of Wolves, they made you want to go back and play the previous DLCs with Etheric Light. Okay, using Etheric Light to take a Vision of Confluence, which is a weapon you got from the very first raid from Vanilla Destiny, and you could bring it into relevance now. Oh, now now I want to run Vault the Glass again because I never got that you know, Vision of Confluence or I never got that Fate, Fate Bringer. Bringer or something. So yeah. I want to go back and get that. It made you at least want to try to go get some of that stuff again. I love that fact. I was so excited with House of Wolves of how it made not just House of Wolves, but it made the Dark Below. And it made Vanilla Destiny once again valid. It made It made you want to go back and play some of that stuff again. As good as The Taken King is... That's the one thing that they left out. Like, if you go by the um, the Taken King edition of Destiny, you get the Dark Below, you get the House of Wolves. Whoop de freaking do! They're irrelevant. Every single thing you get from those DLCs is irrelevant because once you get to level forty and you get your light level up, there's no, there's nothing. It all, it's all Taken King content. So, I'm paying fifty nine ninety nine or forty nine ninety nine, whatever you know, for three DLCs, but only one is valid. Mm-hmm. And the, as, like I said, as good as the Taken King is, as good as it is, that's the one thing it did badly is it didn't make anything else relevant somehow. So that's that's my biggest complaint right now with the, with with Destiny is that they just didn't. I mean, I would love to go back and play Vault of Glass. Other than the fact that how quickly can I beat Atheon? You know, how quickly can I run through it in Beast Mode right now? Just <laughs> you know, kill it. I mean, that's fun. I ain't gonna get it wrong, but it's like, still need to get Fallout Raider. Yeah. I mean, still, I'm like going to kill Skolosh, you know. Why would you want to do all those things? Kill Crota, kill Crota on hard mode, you know, go through Atheon on hard mode. Why would you want to do any of that stuff other than personal satisfaction? You wouldn't because nothing you get is valid. And that's by definition what the raid is. The only reason you're raiding is for raid gear. Yep. 
and then on normal mode, then you use that gear to go through hard mode because nothing else you get is good as is as good as raid. So if the, it's all about the gear, you made gear invalid, and that's where I'm hoping Bungie has learned something. Well, I hope they also learned that fine code or something like that. That if I've earned gauntlets from my hunter or whatever it is, don't give me three more pairs of gauntlets because I, I can only run the vault. You know, I can only run the vault of glass one time a week. So if I'm gonna run it. I'm going to go through the hours to run it. Don't give me gear that I've already had three other times. They said they were going to fix it and that they had fixed it. Supposedly, yes. Yeah, so were... And I can say I can speak from experience, and I was running it through Nightfalls three times a week. I was running, you know, for a while there, we were running Crota three times a week, you know. It was, we got the same things over and over. Torch got, I don't know how many Gallahorns from the first time, oh and I'm like, gosh. then you got other people... Okay, that's not random. When somebody gets 10 Gallahorns and then one person gets none, that's not random. There's something wrong with that loot system. Yeah, there, there's... And when I get purple and, and uh, then the I same guess thing, it's just Coming ridiculous. up with like the weapon design stuff that they come up with and everything, like, they... You know, it's like, there's always, like, weapons that are way better than others and stuff along those lines, but it's like, I just find ways to balance or something like that, or like we were talking about before. If it's multiplayer, like, have multiplayer weapons versus story weapons or mission weapons like that way you can they can tweak them and balance them the way they want to balance them without well, affecting yeah, exactly. one or the other and, but they, i think they spend way too much time worrying about weapon balances instead of actual content agreed i was like they're more concerned about making something less potent or most more potent or because people i'm like okay quit whining it's just like every other game every other multiplayer game there is some weapons are more powered than others yep others are not and if you got the powered weapon and you know how to use it then instead of worrying about making that water down, make something worth it. Like just for instance, the Galahorn is a great, you know, great rocket launcher. But you made it like the unicorn of the whole thing, game, and then I'm like, okay, we'll make something else. Make me want to use other than Galahorn. Yeah. Dragon's Breath with tracking yeah, would have been. You could have done a lot. Would have been There's a lot right that you can with. do, but that should be my choice. When you decide to make Galahorn obsolete or make all the vault weapons from the you know vision of confluence fate bringer yes those are some of my favorite guns atheon's epilogue my favorite guns the fact that you made them irrelevant angers me because i paid my dues to get those weapons i ran the vault i got it i leveled it up i ran through the uh prison of elders i got etheric light i brought it into dlc2 okay i should be able to bring it into the D taken king dlc Give me give me something really hard to do to get, you know, ultra etheric light or something, you know, to bring it in. <laughs> give me something hard to earn to bring that into relevance. Right. Like, but I've earned it, and that should be my choice. I think Bungie made a mistake in trying to be Big Brother by way too much. It's like, okay, well, you're, we want you to use these weapons. That's not your choice. It should be my choice as the player. I put the time in. I supported you. I bought the DLCs. I got the game. And I ran through the vaults. I got the guns. I like my Vision of Confluence, one of the best guns in the game. I still like Fagenbringer, and I still use Atheon's Epilogue. You know, I still want to bring them into relevance. What? You, you use Atheon's Epilogue? I do. I, I still run with it. That was still the one. That's pretty much the only gun I use in story mode because yeah. I don't have anything else that's worth relevance. Especially a Void. Of course, I haven't on. played oh, the game in. It's still relevant. You can still make it. I haven't played the game in four months. And there are bounties that are like, you know, get weapon, get damage with Void Gun. I'm like, okay, I think, well. I think Avion's Epilogue was the very first gun I got out of the raid, and I never used it. Oh, I like it. I like it. It's, it's one of my favorite I, guns. Especially if you need Void Damage I could, really quick. Uh, well, I would throw it on if I needed Void Damage, I guess, as a primary. But, but again, it's your your yeah. choice, and exactly. it should be it should exactly. be it should be my choice. And the, all the gun tweaks, gun tweaks, and gun tweaks, and gun tweaks that Destiny's been focused on. And again, well, they got so worried about like what weapon people were using. Oh, these people are using auto rifles too much. So let's exactly let's lower the auto rifles and use the scout. And because no one's using pulse rifles, so let's that's, upgrade. The, but see, the that's what I liked about rifles. the multiplayer. Like, that's what I still like about the multiplayer in Destiny. I'm like, for, it's like Call of Duty. I'm like, it's not anything like it. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's the same weapons over and over again. I'm like, I can still. Pl it's still about skill. It's still about how you use it. In Call of Duty, once you, it's ridiculous because you got these J holes that have every perk unlocked and have every secret attachment, and <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm never going to get leveled up that high to get all the goodies that you've got. At least in Destiny, you can level your gun up in story mode, then go into the Crucible, 
and you're on a, le a, a fairly even playing field. So I still give Crucible marks. I still like the Crucible yep. as far as multiplayer. I think it's better than Call of Duty in, in a lot of aspects. But that's because, I mean, I'm not going to... I'm not real good at multiplayer, but it's fun. I can still go into... I don't play multiplayer in Call of Duty because it's not fun for me. Right. But I do go into the Crucible every once in a while because I do... Even though if I suck, I still have a good couple of games and I still enjoyed it. Yeah. I still had fun. And that's about... To me, that's what it's all about is if you're not enjoying playing the game anymore, then... It's... It Mm -hmm. At least, like, with Destiny, like, the story mode, stuff like that, and using the weapons and stuff, that can carry into the multiplayer as far as, like, you know how that weapon works, you know how it works, stuff on the lines. Anything that you know how to do in Call of Duty from the story mode as far as how a certain gun works and like that, you can't carry that to multiplayer. Exactly. Yeah. Multi the guns, the guns seem different. to act completely different between multiplayer and Yeah, and, and with Call of Duty, it's more, like... I mean, Call of Duty comes down to like more about understanding the maps, how the map flows, where people are going to it's spawn. It's all about maps because when you can get killed mm. by the luck box grenade, I re that's my most vivid memories of multiplayer is in Call of Duty was the, I'm getting killed by, how did I, the kill cam. Oh, that's because they ran to the corner, looked up at a 45 degree angle and threw a grenade and it miraculously perfectly lands at sea. Yep. You know, that's, that's not skill. That's just I had all the time in the world, and I figured out this. And I'm going. That's yeah, I hate that. I mean, I've I've sunk a lot of time in the multiplayer, but most of it's just been team deathmatch. So we don't do domination or anything on those lines. It's just deathmatch. But that's that's where for those games, it's understanding map flow, like where you're going to spawn, how mm -hmm. you're going to spawn, where's the idea that people are going to run to, and then what weapon works best for you. I did spend way too much time um, recently watching like Call of Duty World Championship. Of, uh, because I was curious. It's interesting that the the um, tournament stuff that they did for that, where it's um, now they have where like the pros will like I think it's an arena mode now too. But um, they go through and you pick like which weapon you want banned. So they'd be like, well, they ban the Pharaoh, they ban the Vesper, they ban the Shiva, like they ban these weapons. So it's like, well, the pros are saying that they're banning those weapons, so those must be the weapons that are really good. Because they don't want everybody using those weapons, so it's like, well, I was like, well, what's this? Like the Pharaoh, it's a four-round burst submachine gun. That thing's crazy good, um, but you have to know how to use it. It has to be like your fit your play style as far as running yeah. around the map and stuff along those lines. If you don't, it doesn't fit your play style. It's not going to help you at all. But at least Call of Duty doesn't try to pretend it's something it's not. And I, no, I give I mean, them credit. Like that's you're absolutely right. When you watch the videos for the design, like they're talking about the flow and everything else, and I'm like. That's why I just I don't enjoy it, but I I can I respect it. I respect the people that play it. They just have way too much time on their hands, and yeah, at do. least I could play in Crucible, and Destiny. Pick it up tomorrow. I can play it, and I'll get some kills. I'll dial some, and I'll still enjoy playing it. Yeah, I'm like three hours a night in Call of Duty right now. Speaking so of which, much. I'm so sick of Destiny and the Iron Banner. <laughs> I'm just sorry. I just want to throw that out there. You need, like I said, that's what I'm saying. Bungie needs to come up with something else other than the Iron Banner. And that's this little holiday content is nice and I appreciate it. But if I think I could swallow the pill even better if they could actually just say, okay, we're working on Destiny 2. It'll be out first quarter of next year. Don't even give me a date. Just give me a time frame of what we're trying to do. But Des I, but the Bungie's just like, shh, we're going to be quiet. We're they're, 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 I'm sure they'll save that for E3 at PlayStation's conference. I'm sure they'll, PlayStation will have something about but it. But how many people are they going to lose between now and then? But, but people will come back. I'll come back. Yeah. I haven't played it in months. I'll come back. All right. Moving on. Uh, a fan suggested a fan by the name of Zoom Demon. I may talk to like almost every day. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. <laughs> um, she came up with the idea for your most difficult achievement or most difficult game that you've beaten, or a combination of both. Or like, are you talking about boss or game in general? Uh, I, 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 where you feel like, where is like one of your prouder moments, like a gaming wise that you've beaten a game okay. or okay. some of those lines, or that. like maybe achievement that goes with it. Well, we're not really achievement hunters. No. Yeah, ever. But. But I'm sure it's probably like like oh. the Vidmaster achievement or whatever. Oh, I do have. Oh, Vidmaster is good. I do have the but Avatar: The Last that's Airbender. That's probably what she's talking about. Yeah. Like, you know what what in game like, gamer score achieve reward achievement is oh, the hardest one that you're man. probably getting. Vidmaster is. Oh, that's a good one. What's Vidmaster? Vidmaster was when um was for Halo Three, Halo Three yeah. you had to have. So you could get recon armor. There was oh, seven yes. achievements that you needed, Vidmaster yes. achievements that you needed to get. 
and there was one achievement which was make it, th- and it was an ODST for um, what is their horde mode called? Firefight. Firefight. Mm-hmm. Um, you had to make it through four sets, so there's five rounds. You know, it's like per set, and you had to make it through four sets on heroic difficulty, and. Uh, that was one of the achievements. That is probably one of the achievements I'm probably most proud of because I did it multiple times. But the first time we ever did it, um, it was me, Joey, Brandon, and Trevor. I was there for some of them. We did it for you and one of yeah. them kind of thing. But the first time we ever did it, I think it was me, Joey, Brandon, and Trevor maybe. Yeah. Um, and we did it on the one that was more of the bigger map. Um, that was outside kind of thing. And we were playing for about two hours and 20 minutes. We were in, still going. We were on the last wave, the last, everything that we needed. I had died, ran out of lives. Trevor was dead, out of lives. So it was Joey and Brandon. And Brandon managed to get one of the brutes to focus on him as Joey jumped over top of him and then assassinated him in the back to get the final kill. Like, we were all out of lives. It was about to be like, we spent two and a half hours for nothing. <laughs> And when we got it, we were all excited, screaming, jumping, you know, all excited and stuff. So we go to Halo 3, throw on our recon armor. We were all excited. So that's why I might have the recon helmet and stuff on those lines. But then we found out where you did it on the, one of the masses, like more like the elevator portion kind of thing, where it's like the, like a plus sign, kind of like they mm-hmm. all float in the middle. That one's a lot easier. Um, you can beat that one in about two hours. But I did that one multiple times with people. That's probably my most favorite achievement. Yeah, I think that I think that one was the one that I was. Once you figured out that was the one to do, I think I did it with you, and then we did it for a bunch of other people in our clan at the time. But the first time we did it, that was like two and a half hours, and it came down to one lucky assassination by Joey jumping over this brute and doing a one eighty spin to hit him in the back. That's probably my one of my most favorite achievements. I do have another one, but I'll let you go. Uh, hardest game slash achievement I ever did. The hardest game I ever played was uh, Ninja Gaiden. Whichever Ninja oh, Gaiden God. one, I, whichever one I borrowed from you, that was that the, broke hands down me. the hardest game I ever played. Broke me. I've never been at, though so angry at a game. <laughs> it's just just anger because I'm like it. It can't be this hard. I'm like I'm I'm a very competent and on, individual, and you were probably playing it on easy, like I, I was. was playing on normal. I don't play on yeah. easy. I think I yeah I was probably on normal too. But I'm like okay, normal can't be this hard. And when I started looking up online about how ridiculously hard this game ended up being, it was good though. For me, it, it was well, it good. was. I liked the story, the graphics, because you know I'm a fan of Ninja Gaiden from the, you know, from the Nintendo. You know, I played <laughs> I old, played old only school. Only Ninja Gaiden uh, guy I ever played was the one I borrowed from you. But man, oh, that was so. Okay, so that's a good one, Chris. I was, oh, I was gosh. very, I was very l- like, yes, when I finally finished <laughs> that game. And I think one of my all-time favorite moments in gaming was in that game too. But all of a sudden, I can't remember what it was. <laughs> of course, right when you need yeah, it. Right when I need it. Uh, for achievements, I'd have to go look. I'd have to go look and think about it because I didn't give this one much thought. But I could say one of the prouder moments. I've had in gaming was before achievements, reaching back to Final Fantasy VII. Yes, throwing a shout out to Agent M. Final Fantasy VII for the PlayStation when I beat Emerald Weapon. Don't know uh, what any of that means. So I'm just going to give you there, a there are look. two super bosses that you had were optional in the game that you could beat. Over a million hit points, ridiculous. So. Being the kind of gamer I was, I'm like, well, I'm going to do this. And in order to even have a chance, you had to do a lot of uh, what they call chocobo racing. You'd had to do a whole lot of other things. You basically had – there was a lot to do in order to get, like, the the ultimate materia, the ultimate summons. And I was, you know, I'm a treasure hunter. I like, I like to get everything that possibly you can. And they're all within the realm of possibility, but it took time. Lots and lots <laughs> of time. So, ended up doing all that. Got the Knights of the Round, which was the ultimate summon. Basically, to spe- you know, summoning 12 knights, and they had all had their animation sequence. So, go fight Emerald. Had the ultimate set up. Basically, took several hours on this boss fight. <laughs> took, s- because basically you couldn't turn off the animation sequences. So, you have three characters. The summon is, Knights of the Round, which is, has, has a, like a three or four minute, you know, animation sequence because you're summoning 12 knights. 
and they all get this ultra hit in. You have that junction with quadra magic, which means you cast it four times. <laughs> Three characters doing all mim- mimicking the first character. So one turn would take 30, 45 minutes, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. I ended up beating it at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Agent M was with me. I was in my room. Everybody's asleep. You know, I would, you know, went and got some snacks and sandwiches, sitting there watching it and just, cause it's turn based, so I just make sure my next turn's all queued up. And then ultimately I beat it. And I was like, oh, you know, doing baby circles. Yay, I beat it. <laughs> Trying to be all quiet, but super excited. Cause again, I'm a younger kid and this is like the, the pinnacle of gaming. I'm like, I can't believe I did that. And then I went and fought the next boss, which was Rumi Weapon, killed him like, Without a doubt. And then I went to go beat the game and like B slapped the main boss in the face. And like, <laughs> cause apparently all the experience I had gotten, not just from that, but to get to that point was ridiculously high compared to the game. So I was way above it. So that's probably one of the more prouder moments because for personal achievement and all the time it made it worth it that I put into it and like, Oh, I beat. You know, you beat the game, great. But did you beat Emerald? No, I didn't have that. Oh, I did. You know, <laughs> bragging rights. You know, around because wasn't that long after I started working at GameStop, and it's gonna be Babbage's back in the day. And I'd be like, Hey, did you ever play this? I'm like, yeah. Did you ever beat this? No, oh, I did. You know, just put that out there. <laughs> nice. That's that's a good one. Uh, achievement wise, also the Vidmaster. That was a great choice, Brett. Um, Thank you. The uh, like in back to back nights. Um, so, like, a Friday night, I was playing with uh, Primordial Goo, Chris, and uh, we were doing Modern Warfare 2, and we got the all the three stars in the Spec Ops missions. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we finished that, and then we went and did um, ODST on Legendary Difficulty, and we were just going to run through a few missions here and there and, like, get the um, video, um, the, 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 well, the audio, like, cue things that's part of the game, like, it tells another story, okay. like, little audio pieces you get. Mm-hmm. So we're getting those along the way. Well, next thing we know, we're almost at the like. He was getting ready to go to bed, and I was like, "Chris, I think we got one mission left." And he's like, "Really?" And I was like, "So we just did the last mission. So we beat the entire game of ODST on Legendary, and got like all these achievements. So I got all thousand achievements for our all thousand gamer score for ODST that night on Friday night. And then so I figured, well, Saturday." I was like, I've done everything else in Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, except for beat the campaign on Veteran. So I was like, well, I'm just going to do the campaign on Veteran. So I beat the campaign on Veteran in one sitting to get to have a thousand gamer score in Modern Warfare 2. And that mission where you have to protect in the in the cabin, mm-hmm. you, know, you protect the, the router while it's down yeah. and stuff, and then you have to run down the hill. Well, that hill run that was on probably, Veteran... That was... That was probably one of my favorite parts of gaming, too, but that mission right there. That mission's great, but that hill run on Veteran, where you literally would spawn, take two steps, and get killed by a grenade, I thought it was in a spawn trap. I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to beat this. And it, at the end of the mission, like, down the bottom of the hill, it's like you get blown up by a, you know, a Claymore or whatever it is, and that cues the cutscene and stuff along the lines. I made it all the way to the bottom of the hill. The explosion went off. I thought I had made it to the end. It spawned me all the way at the top of the hill again. I got blown up by a different thing. I did that thing about 40 or 50 times trying to get down that stupid hill. And when I finally did, I was excited. And then I went on to beat the rest of the game. So I, I managed to 1,000 gamer score ODST and Modern Warfare 2 in back-to-back nights. Or back-to-back days. So I, thought I that don't was know if cool. I should be proud or upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was one of those, it was just, I was just like, well, I don't care about gamer score as much. But I was like, I've done everything else in Modern Warfare 2 at this point. I was like, I might as well just do the veteran so I can have the thought because I had just done ODST so I figured I was like well I'm in this like o- you know achievement hunting mode or something along those lines so Chris do you want to tell us a story we are at 54 minutes we are at a story what story we want to hear well, I, I, Chris you always have great stories so and you know we usually have a fun segment that we do but I didn't have anything planned or an no, idea I've been good lately um, we don't have any deconstruction of Chris's. We don't have, we might have had one tonight after <laughs> six of these drinks. A few more, I'll be alright. Um, but I don't, I didn't like, I mean, we could, movies, music, something like that. I, mean, I don't know if there's anything you want to talk about besides baby metal. Baby metal. Listen yeah. to some baby metal. I don't know why I'm obsessed uh-huh. with that for the past like week. I could but, tell you my waiter story from Ireland on, on air. Okay. 
Go for it. Waiter story from Ireland. The waiter story. And then from we Ireland. will. Agent, I feel like Agent M should be a part of this. <laughs> but she's gonna shake her head. No. She's shaking her head. No. She did so good last episode. She too. did. She spoke. Spoke a lot. Mm-hmm. We're so proud. She's being attacked by a cat right now. Yes. 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 Well, uh, Agent M was nice enough to let me accompany her on a trip to Ireland. And there was basically an open bar everywhere we went. I took full advantage. (laughs) One of the last nights of the trip, we were there. There was a little formal get-together, formal dinner. And there was a cocktail party beforehand. I'm not the cocktail party kind. Never (laughs) been to one. So we went down to the cocktail party. And, hey, it was an open bar. So I felt it was my duty to partake. On her half as well as mine. And there was a waiter there that um, was helping me quite a bit with my beverage of choice, which was the Jameson and ginger ale. So then the event started, so we went to the ballroom, got seated, and they brought dinner plates and whatnot, and I had a few more as the waiter kept coming back and giving me some. I had to go to run to the restroom real quick, so ran, went out the room, went to the restroom, the gilded restroom, as I like to call it, because like everything's like gold plated, chandeliers, <laughs> a crystal, and the stalls. Like the stalls are walled in the rooms, not stalls, basically. <laughs> so I come out of the bathroom, wash my hands. I did, did wash my hands. Come out of the bathroom, and there is literally the waiter standing at the bathroom with a towel hanging on one hand, a silver tray in the other, with a single. Jameson and ginger ale drink on it. <laughs> and he goes, Jameson and ginger ale? <laughs> I take the drink. I hug the waiter <laughs> because I'm so overcome with emotion at this point. But he's waiting for me, and I've had quite a few at this point. So then I go back to did the table. Did he hug you back at least? He did. It was a good hug. It was good times. Okay. <laughs> I get back to the table, and Agent M's actually upset with me because she thinks I've done gone to another bar and gotten another drink. And I'm like, no, no, no. You have to... You have to hear what this happened. <laughs> I can't make this up. I'm like, he was waiting for me at the bathroom. The Jameson and ginger ale. It was probably one of the best moments of my life. It was very emotional. Oh, wow. I hope he got a good tip. A company took care of everything, so, oh, okay. you know, it was open bar. So, I'm sure he did. Mm-hmm. In I the mean, end. I would hope so. I would think so. That's a great story. It was, it was a good And that takes times. us basically right to an hour. So... Uh, thank you for listening or watching as we are on the YouTubes, and hopefully the camcorder is actually recording. So I got a new camcorder. So um, yeah, yeah, it's what? Wait, okay. Anyways, um, go to our website, Podcast dot com. You can probably find the video there. It'll be on the front page, or go to YouTube, look look up Vahoma Podcast, or you can follow us on Twitter at Vahoma underscore Podcast. And then, I don't feel like going through the rest of the stuff. I just, no, no, I think it's good. That's good enough. So, uh, thank you for listening. We appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers. I was hoping this actually records the entire time. Bert, I'm going to ask you to clap here in a second. Clap if you can't whistle. <laughs> what, we got another wheel coming up? Clap if you can't whistle. And then you're going to give me your Disney that you do before I start. You go like, do 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 Hey, does anyone have uh, like a gunshot that they can do? So we could do from Clue. I am your singing telegram. You can pull up the sound up sure from YouTube or something. Ditches. Are we pulling up a sound effect real quick? Yes, yes we are. It's 
gonna be like after that's gonna be like name that movie. <laughs> we just watched that last night. It's a great movie. I just recently bought it in Blu-ray. For the first time that we watched it, where it was just one ending. It's a bit more than it's, it's supposed to be like a pistol shot, not a machine gun. Going. That might actually be better, though. We need a pistol shot. It, 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 it could be like, I am receiving telegram. And then when it pauses, I could be like, I am. And then it goes again. There we go. That works. That works. That no, it was black powder, but oh well. Alright, we're close enough. That ran away with the mouth. Red clap. Thank you. Okay, ready? Go. Yeah. 